In Lesson 4-7, the example, How Many Different Batting Orders, we're going to explore how to use permutations and factorials. The manager of a youth baseball team has picked nine players to start an upcoming playoff game. How many different ways are there for the manager to arrange these nine players to make up a team's batting order? So when I look at this, I see that we have nine players total and we're trying to arrange them. And that's what tells us we're going to be looking at something with permutations and or factorials. So I'm looking at arranging these nine players in a batting order. So I say, okay, batting order. I have the first batter, the second, the third, all the way out to the ninth. And then I need to come up with, well, how many different batting orders are there? This is not a probability question. I'm going to draw a slot for each batter, the first batter. How many choices do I have for the first batter? Well, there's nine players, so I can put nine different players here. How many choices are there for the second batter? Eight. So I have eight different people. Now that I finally selected this one, now I only have eight. If I continue this process, I'm going from nine players to eight to seven to six to five, all the way down to the last batter. There's only going to be one person left for that spot. What this works out to be is what we call nine factorial, telling us that there's over 300,000 different possible batting orders when you have nine players on a team. What we used here was the factorial, which means we're using nine times eight times seven times six, all the way down to times one. If you'd like more practice with factorials and combinations, or excuse me, and permutations, please try exercise five.